Hello everyone and welcome to our video on converting numbers from base 10 to base 2. We did on the previous video base 2 to base 10. It was a lot simpler, but this isn't too bad either. So first what we're going to do is we're going to say, here's our number, 57. And we're going to say, 2 to what power is going to contain this number? So in other words, how many bits do I need to contain this number? In this one, it would be 2 to the 6th, because we would say, go about guessing, 2 to the 4th is 16, so no, 2 to the 5th is 32, so no, 2 to the 6th is 64. Oh, there we go. So the first power we arrive at that's greater than or equal to this number, we're going to use it. And in this case, it's going to be 2 to the 6th. However, we don't want to contain this number, we want to represent this number. So, in order to prevent an overflow, we are going to use the power less than the one used to contain it, and we'll add all the subsequent powers, the lesser powers, in order to add up to this number. Okay, so we don't want to overshoot the number. If we were to just use plain 2 to the 6th, we would represent the number um, 64. Or 63 we wouldn't represent 57 like we want to so we're going to use 2 to the fifth and we say okay does 57 minus 2 to the fifth is that greater than or equal to 0 so if we subtract and we'll see 57 minus 32 is 25 so it is greater than or equal to 0 so that means we're going to use it we'll put a 1 to represent it and we'll put it in our first place. Now let's continue. Now our remainder is 25. We're going to have to use our powers and if they are less than the remainder subtract from the remainder until our remainder is 0. So I'm going to explain how we do that right here. So now we have a remainder of 25 we're going to say 2 to the fourth is 16. Does 25 minus 16, is it greater than or equal to 0? Yes. So if the answer is yes, we put a 1, put that there, and we subtract that power from the remainder. So 2 to the 4th is 16, 25 minus 16 will be 9. Our remainder is now 9, and our numbers so far are 1 and 1. Now we have a remainder of 8 or sorry, of 9. So we'll say 2 to the 3rd is 8. Is 9 minus 8 greater than or equal to 0? Yes, it is. So we're going to say, all right, we're going to use that, and we're going to subtract that number from the remainder. 9 minus 8 is 1. So our remainder is now 1. And here is where we're going to stop using certain powers. Um, so we're going to start seeing a couple zeros rather than ones. Here we have 2 to the second power, which is 4. Now we'll look at the remainder, and we'll look at the power, and we'll say, does 1, the remainder, minus the power of 4, is that greater than or equal to 0? No, it is not. If it answers no, we will put a 0 here. And we will not subtract anything from the remainder, because if we did, we would get a negative number. Now let's continue on to the next power, and we'll say 2 to the 1. Is 2 to the 1, or sorry, is the remainder minus 2 to the 1 greater than or equal to 0? No, it is not. It would be negative once again. So we'll put another 0 there, and we will say we're not going to subtract anything from the remainder leave it how it is, and go to the next power. Now we'll take 2 to the 0, 2 to the 0 being our next power. We'll have a remainder of 1, and we'll say, uh, does the power of 0, does the product of that 1 uh, subtracted from our remainder, is that greater than or equal to 0? The answer is yes. So. Now that we know that, we're going to say 1. We're going to use that. Put that 1 there, subtract from the remainder, and we'll get a 0. And there you have it. We'll string all these numbers together, 1 all the way to the left, and then 
one again, one, zero, zero, one. And that is our number right there. In order to check, you can always uh, add those powers up just how you converted to base 10. Remember how we said, okay, this is the zeros place. I'm going to say 2 to the 0, 1, plus, okay, this is the third. So 2 to the third plus, so it's 8. 8 plus 1 is 9, plus 16, plus 25. Uh, that's going to be 57. So there you go. You have, you have your 32 plus uh, 9 plus 16. So 25 plus 32 is 57. Now that we've mapped it out, it's pretty easy to check. And really, you only have three sources of error. One, you get your math wrong on one of these powers or something, or you subtract wrong or something like that. Two, you uh, overshoot the power, and instead of representing it, you end up containing it, which means that when you reach here to the power of zero, your remainder will not be zero. Rather, it will be a positive uh, number. And, or, or sorry, that... I guess the answer would be that you wouldn't even arrive to this before it's zero. If you overshoot this, uh, and and you let's say you have two to the sixth, for instance, and you use those, you're not even going to end up arriving at two to the zero because you'll have so much surplus um, from over here. You'll have arrived at zero much before that. Now, if you have a power less, let's say we do two to the fourth which would be 16, and we subtract 16, and we subtract 9, and we subtract, uh, or sorry, we subtract 8, we subtract 4, we subtract all those, then we're still going to have this number here being positive. We're going to say, what's wrong? That means we didn't use enough bits to represent this number. So just check your errors. Do a lot of pr uh, conversions with uh, numbers of five bits or more and uh, if you have any questions ask your course instructor thanks for watching this video and uh, thanks for having patience with it